May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. February 21, 2024 First Wednesday of Lent Memorial of St. Peter Damien, Bishop and Doctor of the Church A reading from the Book of Jonah The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind, he may turn from his fierce anger, so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm. The response is, A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. For you have no delight in sacrifice, if I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. When the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see, something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah, and see, something greater than Jonah is here. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection The crowd seemed to be a mixed bunch. First, there were those who wholeheartedly believed in Jesus. The Twelve, for example, left everything behind to follow him. His mother and various other holy women believed in him and were his faithful followers. But within the growing crowd, it appeared that there were many who questioned Jesus and wanted some form of proof of who he was. Thus, they wanted a sign from heaven. 
A sign from heaven would have been some externally manifest proof of who Jesus was. Granted, Jesus had already performed numerous miracles. But it seems that this was not enough. They wanted more and that desire is a clear indication of a stubbornness of heart and a lack of faith. So Jesus could not and would not give them the sign they wanted. Instead, Jesus says that the only sign they will receive is the sign of Jonah. Recall that the sign of Jonah was not very appealing. He was thrown over the side of a boat and swallowed by a whale, where he remained for three days before being spit up on the shores of Nineveh. Jesus' sign would be similar. He would suffer at the hands of the religious leaders and civil authorities, be killed and be placed in a tomb. And then, three days later, he would rise. But his resurrection was not one in which he came forth with rays of light for all to see, rather, his post-resurrection appearances were to those who already manifested faith and already believed. The lesson for us is that God will not convince us of the matters of faith through powerful and Hollywood-like public manifestations of God's greatness. Instead, the sign we are offered is an invitation to die with Christ so that we can personally begin to experience the new life of the resurrection. This gift of faith is interior, not publicly exterior. Our death to sin is something we personally and interiorly do, and the new life we receive can only be seen by others by the witness of our lives that are changed. Reflect, today, upon the true sign God has given you. If you are one who seems to be waiting for some manifest sign from our Lord, wait no longer. Look at the crucifix, see Jesus suffering in death, and choose to follow him in a death to all sin and selfishness. Die with him, enter the tomb with him and allow him to bring you forth interiorly renewed this Lent, so that you can be transformed by this one and only sign from heaven. Let us pray. My crucified Lord, I gaze upon the crucifix and see in your death the greatest act of love ever known. Give me the grace I need to follow you to the tomb so that your death will triumph over my sins. Free me, dear Lord, during the Lenten journey so that I will be able to fully share in your new life of the resurrection. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and gospel. May God bless us all.